No, baby, that's for somebody else. We're just going to keep you right where you're at right now. It doesn't matter what you think. The Wrestling Round presents Break It Down with Brian H. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of Break It Down with Brian H, episode number 62. So, this episode is actually different than what I thought it would be. Why? Because originally I had planned to do a show right after Monday Night Raw, knowing that I was going to SmackDown Live right here in Baltimore, Maryland. So, I figured, all right, I'll do a post show on, I'll do episode 62 right after Raw, then I'll go to SmackDown. Maybe get some content while I'm down there and then see what happens. Well, I was watching Raw and I fell asleep. So, because I fell asleep, there was no show. Go figure, right? So, I said, all right. Well, I'm down here. And guess what? Afterwards, um, I went down there. Shout out to my boy, Mo. Um, I was coming back and uh, my boy, Blake, um, Najir, or two champs from... The Big Gold Belt Podcast, my boy Balance, and uh, Balance's lady friend, they all rolled back with me to Balance House. So I said, look, this is what we're going to do. Since y'all ride with me, y'all going to do a show. So, what I'm going to do first, because I had some From the Realm questions, I'm going to answer those first, and then I'm going to give you the show. I know it's different. I know From the Realm usually comes on afterwards, but I'm going to give you From the Realm first, and then... Um, you'll get the show. So, coming up after this music. And now, for our From the Realm segment, where I answer your questions from the Facebook fan page, the Facebook group page, and the Twitter at Wrestling Realm. Okay, so, From the Realm this week, we starting off, got three questions from the Shark, Sean Williams, and they are, first, has there been a guy on the main roster who's fallen from grace more than Braun Strowman? Honestly, Shark, I don't think so. Um, maybe Lex Luger, and I know the difference with Luger is that Luger actually had title matches and big programs where it was just about him. But and this also has to do with me watching WrestleMania nine and ten recently. But the reason I say Luger because go back to those WrestleManias, right? WrestleMania nine, he was in a great match with well, a match with Mister Perfect, which you know Perfect went forgot the whole their plans but nonetheless i thought it was a decent match wrestlemania 10 we oh so actually start with wrestlemania and i stay right there right so then by SummerSlam we had the whole lex express should have won the title but for whatever reason they just wasn't confident even going into survivor series the program was built behind him and yokozuna nonetheless we didn't get um you know, he just, it just didn't work. So even by WrestleMania 10, it was still, he was still positioned in a big spot, still positioned in um, a main event story only to lose. But then WrestleMania 11, he was in a throwaway tag team match. That wasn't even for the tag team titles. So that's the only person or the person that comes right to mind who's fallen from grace. Sharks, next question. How would you book this Sunday to where all three faces win the big matches? Woo, boy, uh, you'll hear about that more coming up. But um, so to me, Becky, I want to see, I told you, I want to see Becky pin Ronda. I mean, yeah, I tap Ronda. I want to see that happen. Kofi, I want to see him hit maybe two Trouble in Paradises and one Daniel Bryan and maybe New Day making sure Rowan stay away. And then Seth Rollins, uh, um, I, I to me, I just have to see Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns come out to help him. That's the only way I can see it done. I know people want Rollins to win. I know you do, Shark, but just right now, he just does not look like the guy. Maybe, I don't know. I, I, I don't. Seth Rollins reminds me of Edge as a baby face. And I'm a huge Edge fan, but I just was not that big of a fan as him as a face. And that's the way I feel about Rollins. And then last, who needs to win more at TakeOver for these two title matches? Gargano versus Cole and Dream versus Riddle. Um, I don't know if any of them necessarily need it. To me, Gargano, I want to see him as NXT champion just because of the buildup and where he's gone. But then again, I mean, and wouldn't he be the first? Yeah, I think he would be the first Grand Slam NXT champion. 
um, I don't want to see him on the main roster right now. The main roster is main roster's crowded, so I don't want to see him there. So I think him winning an NXT title would be good. And then Dream versus Riddle. I like to see Dream have a solid title defense. So I think he needs it more just because we haven't really seen him. You know, he hasn't had the title on a big stage such as TakeOver. So I think he needs that. So uh, make sure you check out the Sharks podcast. Definitely know he's going to bring the heat for this WrestleMania week. And Byron Dixon from the Flex Zone says, why was Oscar screwed again? Byron, I'm not going to necessarily say Oscar was screwed. I think that the SmackDown Live women's title just was kind of treated as the redheaded stepchild. And no matter what, it was going to be looked at as a mid-card title. Just because of the fact that Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte are such dynamic characters. Sure, you could have put... Charlotte and Oscar too at WrestleMania, but let's be real from the political standpoint. We all Oscar, I mean Charlotte was kind of promised this opportunity a year ago, and for all the work that she's doing, she deserves it. Especially considering the fact that when you look at her and all everything she's done, she should be in the name of somebody. She her name should go down as the person who main evented. The first WrestleMania. So, I don't think she was necessarily screwed. Oscar, that is. I just think it's just wrong, bad timing. And then last question from my boy D, also from the Flex Zone. But he's also host Die Sporting Net. So, make sure you check out Die Sporting Net. Uh, it's based off local sports here in Baltimore. And, uh, hey, you know, if you're out there in the D.C. or Virginia or Philadelphia area, you know some sports, uh, you might... You know, pay that nice penny and get D to come cover your games, you know. All right, so will the New Day split up at or after Mania? Um, D, I think it has to happen after Mania if it's going to happen. Just on the simple fact that it's too good of a story. You don't want to ruin it at Mania, especially. I don't think this match closes the show. Um, it's not like with uh, DX where at WrestleMania 15, where you had a China come home because you knew Triple H was going to the corporation later. It's not like New Day has another match. I just don't think it's um I just don't think you split them up right now. Um it's just not time yet. So, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for this week's From the Realm. After this message, get ready for the show brought to you by me, Blake, Balance, Two Champs, and Val's friend, Nicole. Hey, let's get it. It's your boy, The Truth, from the Part of My Bullshit podcast, available everywhere on iTunes, Spotify, and all your major channels. Also, check us out on social media at the PMB Pod. Now we about to kick it back to my man, Brian H., with Break It Down with Brian H., brought to you by the Wrestling Realm. Peace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special edition of Break It Down with Brian H., and you guys are lucky because not only do you have me on the show, you got returning Blake Thomas, who, as I promised, he would be on the uh, preview show for WrestleMania. Yeah, I'm here. But he's also on episode number 62. We also got two champs in the building. Yo, yo. From the Big Gold Belt Podcast. Oh, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, we actually leave a SmackDown. And, we, of course, we got the one, the only, Valance Michael. In the building, I got a personal shout out. I one, of, one of the funniest people I know, and you can introduce your guest if she's gonna be on. This is my friend Nicole. This Nic- is our first time at a wrestling show. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me make sure it's still recording. All right, so guys, what y'all think of the show? We're gonna do the show a little different. Uh, we're gonna talk about just everything. Um, you know, Raw was boring. That's why there wasn't a show like I promised. Uh, did anybody else fall asleep on Raw like I did? Uh, I, I will not confirm or deny. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> See, there you go. I will say this. I mean, I like the ending. You know, they showed it. I was wondering. You know, they told the um, the DC police car here, mm-hmm. as well as the one they busted open. I thought they were going to show us both of them, but they didn't. Yeah, because people do get locked up and they put the same people in the same car. Yeah, I was just, just going to say, that was my right. thing is, I don't know, was I just being overly critical because they was yeah. in D.C., but I was just definitely looking at all the D.C. police 
uh, shenanigans. It just was like, ah, oh, fake, fake, fake. <laughs> but hey, it was a good time. Good, yeah. good job. It was a good time. <laughs> you know. But let's talk about Baron Corbin. Uh, yeah. No, we're not going to talk about Baron Corbin. <laughs> a joke. Have you fallen off the Baron Corbin bandwagon? Um, No, I haven't. Because okay. I'm going to say something. People can say what they want about Baron Corbin, but he's a heel. People hate him because he's an actual heel. That's right. How about that? I like it. I will say this. Folks, if you ever have a friend like Blake, make sure you keep him. <laughs> yep. Because when they're loyal, they stay loyal. Yep. There you go. Because <laughs> apparently he's still loyal to Baron Corbin. Haircut and all. Baron, if you're listening, I'm cheering for you Sunday. I like Baron Corbin. He's, he's definitely You been, too. I do. He's Keep been your best very on. consistent in, in his character. And he actually got a clean win, uh, which was something I haven't seen. Especially with the deep six. I don't think he's won that since God knows when, but... Yeah, he's taking that heel momentum into WrestleMania. So, good. Good, good for story purposes. Get the win. All right, so what y'all think about SmackDown? Kofi Mania. Are y'all ready? Oh, I'm super excited for Kofi Mania. It's happening. The crowd was hot. You know, I mean, I've never seen, personally, I've never heard so many crazy Kofi chants. And um, I think it's definitely a great thing to see up close and personal. So, let's go with this Kofi Mania. Yeah, um, I'm definitely excited for it. Uh, when you look back at everything... Just the way he stood up at Daniel Bryan, first of all, he had that look in his eyes like, nah, bro, you don't know. You don't know me. You do not know me. The whole time I said, like, uh-oh. Like, he about to really smack you. But let's talk about the real highlight of that. Even though this is Kofi Mania and everything, um, can we talk about the animated Big E? <laughs> Please. Who just had me dying laughing the, the whole, whole time. The whole time. But there's another highlight. Uh-huh. <laughs> can we also talk about as Valens is in slow motion about to say something to me, he goes, ah, ah because he got hit with a cold pancake. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was my highlight of the night. Oh, man, I wish somebody would have <laughs> that on Which immediately video. got snatched out of his lap by the kids. It was broken up and demolished. Yep. 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 Like they a ate it? Family yep. around. Oh, yeah. They yep. 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 broke that shit up real quick. Yep. Wow. <laughs> yep. That, that was my highlight. Fuck ah, ah, ah. I didn't know what was happening. It was just cold and lip <laughs> pancake. Yo, man. It was scary shot. Hey, so, man. Newsflash for fans. Those pancakes are cold. <laughs> I'm just on, go- so, this is the second time I've been to a show with Val. So it's been, both of them been great. Last time we saw John Cena. And he- <laughs> Poor ass, old ass John Cena. <laughs> the music. Oh, I think me and Blake just kept texting each other for like the next five days about it. Yeah. Oh, man. Every time I hear Valens doing John Cena's music, it brings a slow tear to my eye. <laughs> makes me sad. Will we see him at Mania Sunday? <laughs> so, the joke that we had was him and The Undertaker popping up in the Andre the Giant Battle Royale. <laughs> Yeah, let's get this pre-show some real huge ratings on USA. <laughs> Might as well, but it still won't bring no legitimacy to it. Oh, that's man. way out the window. Yeah, that's true. So, we'll but see. you know, how about Daniel Bryan tonight? The whole time just kept talking Go ahead, and Mark just drawing yeah. heat, yeah. <laughs> heat, man. Love from you. Of yeah. course, that's my guy. Even though this is the first time I, in a long time that I'm going to be rooting so hard for him to lose. That when he loses that title, I'm going to mark out and I might shed a tear. Uh, is it going to hurt your soul? No. To be rooting against Daniel Bryan. You know, I thought about not. Nah, uh, what would he say if he saw what was in this bag that is sitting in this car? What would he say to you? What would he say to you? No, what would he say to you? I didn't eat it. What? I'm talking about this, uh, this uh, oh. empty bag right here. <laughs> Yeah. See, that's why I would have to root against him because he would be probably cussing me out and yeah, trying to kick me yeah. like he kicked Kevin Owens. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man. So, what y'all think? All right. Y'all see that, uh, what is that, the 14 team or 18, I think. Yeah, all them people tag team match. That mixed a, tag team. That was a really sad moment. Um, breaks my soul to see uh, Andrade not even really get tagged in. Like a lot of people didn't even. Yeah. That, match. that was so silly. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it. I was like, is this because we didn't get um, Ray and Andrade tonight? Yeah, well, oh, I mean. Whoa. That's right. That was what, what is up with SmackDown keep doing this? Ray got hurt yesterday. That's the story. Oh. Yeah, he got hurt on. Uh, that's what I saw um, they announced on Twitter. So that makes me wonder are they cutting that match Sunday? And if they are, is that the reason why we got this tag team match tonight? 
if they cut that match, does this mean that either uh, Kevin Owens now jumps in that match? Or I mean, do they cut it or do they have a replacement? Oh man, that would be good. Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. Hey, I mean, he hasn't been advertised for nothing yet. That's as true. in Kevin Owens, so why not? Even though, I mean, if it was me, I'd do Andrade. But, you know, Kevin Owens, I think, would be a perfect fit. Gives him a chance to come out with a KO Mania 4 shirt. Mm-hmm. So. But he already done deemed it Kofi Mania, so he kind of gave it a break. Okay. I didn't know he got hurt. That kind of hurts my soul. Yeah. First of all, let's talk about one thing. Dominic. Like, we, time has gone that far. Yeah, we see you've seen Dominic... In a ladder match for custody battle, now he's a man. <laughs> right. And I'm still like, yo, where is Tyler going? First of all, why is he that tall? Hey, man. I'm like, right? Maybe that was Eddie's son, but Eddie wasn't tall either. No. Hey, who knows? That's that's the... Uh, Y'all are wild for that. I just thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> thought about that. that was the like, first thing I thought. He definitely got the height from his mother's side of the family. But I don't know what his mother looked like, but you're right. But until I see what she look like, I want to stick with my story. Also, Eddie's daughter is really small, so I don't know about that. Too. <laughs> That's another story. Mm, yeah. Wow, Ray got hurt. Oh, well, you just educated me on something. Yeah. yeah. Man. Wow. All right, so y'all invested in Seth versus Brock. Yeah, um, but Brock the win. <laughs> I, 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 Courtesy of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <sighs> They're sponsored champ for the whole year. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, he made another good point tonight. Uh-huh. If you don't mind me telling your story about the Miz. I mean, he's right oh, there. He yeah. could no, no, I didn't. I didn't know if he wanted to say <laughs> nah, before his own it. show. Or anything. Um, listen to this, Brian. Mm-hmm. So the story was, he feels that um, Miz is going to Raw. Yeah. Because Fox ain't gonna let him promote his show that's on USA. Ah, a good point. I, I was like, touche. Touche, I wish I'd have thought of it. Very smart. Yeah, so you want to definitely keep him as being a big baby face, obviously, mm-hmm. for show purposes. And I think as much as people think Shane, the Shane McMahon match is kind of like a throwaway, but going over Shane, who's overly popular, and then making him a baby face, and, you know, that's just going to catapult him back to the upper echelon of talent, which he typically have been, but I think... Um, him putting him back on the A show mm-hmm. is is what they have to do, and I think this is how they have to do it. Let me ask y'all this about uh, Miz: Do you think he could be a bigger babyface than Seth Rollins? Yeah. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, because I'm not buying Rollins. I tried to, I tried to drink the Kool Aid a little bit, um, but right now, I just to me, it don't believe, seem believable that he can beat Brock Lesnar. Not at all. And in the speech uh, come Monday night about him losing, how he couldn't get it done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll see if he can even get himself over at that point either. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, when Bret Hart was in those situations, like, you believe that Bret would find a way to beat Yokozuna. Mm-hmm. I just don't feel like Seth can do it. I could be wrong, but I just, I think people going to be mad. Um, like we said, three happy endings. I uh, think... It's very hard to do three happy endings. Hard to do three, and I think Seth is going to be the sacrificial lamb. They that's, say. that's 100% what I, what I feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, de- I definitely am saying that Brock retains. Um, I don't know where he goes after this, as in Brock, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> he laughs right out of the door yeah. with the money. I, I'm just invested. I just need a Drew McIntyre, Miz feud in my life, and I'll be fine. Oh, so I didn't think about that one. Yeah, you want to talk about babyface versus heel? That's now, perfect. Now, see, you could do a quick switch. You could put the belt on Seth just to have Drew take it from him. I mean, you won't see me arguing about it. <laughs> so, I'm all for it. Yeah. Right. Question is, oh, so have you seen the cons- the, the conspiracy theories online already? Nah, which which are uh, about Kobe's contract having the wrong date? Oh yeah, you gotta see that. Oh. Yeah, there's 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 close up pictures of of the contract and it's saying March 10th oh, is on there, which um which we all know that March 10th is uh already passed, <laughs> which will make that contract void. Oh, oh. don't do that, WWE. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> I like. <Woo>. It. <clears throat> well, we, we what they gonna have a impromptu at Mania or something? Hey, they no. have him win it and he thinks it's all good until Tuesday night. Yeah. And it's, it's Did not. they take it back? Oh, man. Oh, could you imagine <laughs> Vince McMahon coming out and taking it from... It's going, man, if that happens, that'd be crazy. 
People are gonna be upset. <laughs> That's perfect ending. Yep. <laughs> wow. Man, you got my head messed up with that one. That's what we do. It's, it's too, how you decide you get the feel good moment, but you keep the the, 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 the baby face chasing the heel. Yes. No, we don't need it. We need snatch it away enough. like a wig. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Uh, I'm sneaking out. Peace and blessings. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the show. This for the second day. All right, Valen. You guys be cool. Everybody, right, ladies right. and gentlemen. Thank you. Valen, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. You. Make sure y'all check him out. One of the funniest people oh, I know. And you follow him on Instagram. It's at Valance Michael, right? Um, oh, is it Val, Val Picks? Post Picks. Yeah. Val Post Picks. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. Thank you. And you make sure you check out his comedy. Yeah. Funniest dude I know besides his cousin, Ronald. So, Ronald, yeah, if you're definitely. listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys are both funny. What's, what's Ronald's? I don't know it off the top. It's Ron James, I, I right? I think it's who is Ron James. Yeah, who is Ron James? Make sure you follow him, too. Yeah. Lyrical yeah. genius as well. Yeah. Get your smooch on. You, you just trying to... Yeah, I'm just trying to ruin moments. Yeah. Like... It's WrestleMania season. <laughs> Let's ruin moments. <laughs> Either way, I don't know. Now that we're finally here, because it just feel like it was, it was the, the build up all the way until being five days away. Mm -hmm. So, so many possibilities, but I do like the unpredictability of some of the matches. Where it's like, you really can't really fantasy book it, but... You just got a sense of how you you would want it to go, and I think that creates good fandom for it. But yeah. well, the thing is, what I like about Mania this year, I feel like all the matches, with the exception of that tag match, which it do but it don't, but all the matches seem like really personal. You know, even like Shane and Miz, Drew and uh, Roman, Joe and Ray, like all of them seem like yeah. man, I got a real issue with you, yeah. AJ and Randy. oh, definitely AJ and Randy, you know. So, you know, I, I definitely agree. I will say this, um, wherever I'm at when it comes to Mania, I'm telling you this now, if Nikki Cross wins the Women's Battle Royal and the Iconics win the Women's Tag Team Championship, somebody better record my reaction. Yeah. You'll, you'll never <laughs> see this reaction ever again of happiness, yeah. ever. <laughs> you know, well, unless me and Yen wins like that NXT Women's title, then you'll probably see it again. Uh, you, you'll see it again. But this will be priceless. I can, I, I, can, I bet. You know, so or Shayna Baszler wins the role. All right, though, we're not gonna talk about my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, fellas, we'll let y'all get ready to go. Final thoughts. Start with you, two champs. I don't know. It's going. I think Sunday is going to be one long show. <laughs> I <laughs> so, want lunch breaks. Matter of fact. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be from one of my favorite movies as a child. Like, how long do you think the show's going to be? Forever. That's a Sandlot reference for you young yes. people who don't know. Where are you watching the show? I'm going to be at the co-host Will's house for it in VA, so. Okay. Y'all yeah. got the menu lined up? You say what? You got the menu lined up? I know we're going to have some good bourbon and whiskey for sure, so <laughs> that that's for sure, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens after that. But, no, I just think that, um, I think a lot of the matches, remember, this is their biggest show, and they're putting all the chips down in it. I think they did the right thing for the women's match. Um, I'd be curious to see if Gronk shows up. Be mm -hmm. curious to see if Conor McGregor shows up. Some hot names have been thrown around. And even uh, 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 DC, uh, Daniel uh, Daniel Cormier, yeah. who's been saying he may pop up the, the cost, uh, Brock the match, which obviously we know he's heading towards uh, SmackDown mm -hmm. with the Fox deal and SmackDown's going to Fox November. So there's, there's, there's going to be some implications as you know, WrestleMania, re everything resets after this. But I think... Um, the one thing I, am, I think a lot of people need to consider besides just the whole fantasy booking thing is that they got a lot of promotion to do once WrestleMania is over, too. They're in, the, they're in the, 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 the one of the fight capitals of the world in uh, New York. So you have to think, who do they want doing their their, their PR mm -hmm. movements that next day? Good yep. Morning America in New York. Who, who are those iconic faces that you're going to want? Kofi Kingston. I think I Kofi Kingston is a great, a great choice. I think that... Kofi Kingston with the leather belt is the absolute <laughs> choice that they make, you know? Uh -huh. um, so I think a lot of that needs to go into consideration. And I am very much on board with your statement, too, about two two thumbs up and one thumbs down. Every, everyone's not going to win. So who's going to be the unlucky person, the unlucky popular face that doesn't win? I think for sure Brock is the one that, uh, that uh, as the fans would say, upsets Seth Rollins for his match. 
There you go. Well, I'm going to bounce off of that. I really would like the two thumbs up, one thumbs down, but I, and my, my heart tells me it'll be one thumbs up, two thumbs down. Um, but now with this whole conspiracy about the contract, I can see that switching. Um, I, I think that even though this will be a very long WrestleMania, it, it sparked a lot of interest for me. Um, I think they did do the right thing with the women's match um, and, and with everything. It, even And people can say what they want. Yes, Kofi, a lot of people are behind the Kofi mania and everything, but, you know, yeah, you put put the women, just make them the main event. Um, they all work their butts off just like everybody on the roster, male, female, referee, photographer, videographer, editor, whoever. Everybody's worked their butt off to get to the stage that they're at. And, um, you know, I, I think that there will be some pleasant surprises. And um, I think people will enjoy it. It's just you got to be ready for a possible <laughs> long, cold <laughs> night if you are in that stadium. <laughs> and if it's snow or it rain, guess what? You got to sit there the whole time and deal with it. But guess what? We'll be in a house somewhere. You know, be nice and warm, toasty, enjoying all eight <laughs> hours. I want my 30-minute lunch break. <laughs> and I am looking forward to it, top to bottom. Even the cruiserweight title match. Even though, never mind, we won't talk about two hundred five. But everything, everything they've done for it, and um, we just see where it goes. WrestleMania season, baby. Let's start this off Friday night with NXT. It's Christmas for them, and I'm really excited. Um, like I said, definitely the pre-show, um, excuse me, the previews coming later this week. But just, you know, coming off the heels of a great SmackDown Live, a great way to get us into WrestleMania. Um, <clears throat> I can't wait. Um, like you said, everybody worked hard. And while I am a believer that if this wasn't the first time for the women, I would have put the main event with Kofi and Daniel Bryan because it's the hottest storyline. You got to give the women the opportunity because we never know if we'll get this opportunity again. And, um, you know, it's just, it's really, really exciting. And I think we're going to get something good. So, folks, that'll do it for this week's episode of Break It Down with Brian H. Make sure you are subscribed to the podcast. You know where to find me each and every week. iTunes, or I should say Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Podbean, Spotify, Anchor. You name it, we are there. And, of course, definitely got to give a special happy birthday shout-out to the one, the only, the real Dwayne Allen. Hey, Dwayne Allen, guess what? Kofi Kings is wrestling Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to throw that out there to your non-believing butt. Until the next time, folks. So long, everybody. <laughs>